everybody. Welcome. This is the U.S. Great Sports Podcast. And if there's a place you should be right now, it's here. And we thank you for joining us. I'm Doug Berry, along with Father Richard Heilman, the great himself, <laughs> and our amazing guest. You probably recognize this man, Jesse Romero. Father's going to talk a bit about him and get him set up in just a moment here. But before we get all started, we want to start with a prayer. And Father, of course, you are best and suited for that. Okay. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, amen. Awesome. Thank you, Father. And thank you, everybody out there who's watching, listening right now. This is, again, the U.S. Great Sports Podcast. I appreciate you very much being with us. Every time we do another episode, and we've done them for two years now, just over two years, we know things are changing in the world. I like to say another shoe keeps dropping, and they continue to drop even as we speak right now. Things happening in our church and our government and other aspects of our society. We're going to get into some of that tonight, a lot of that tonight, and really focus on finding the hope and the courage that needs to rise up in these times. But thank you again for your help, your support, your encouragement, your emails, your comments. I want to thank everybody out there. It means a lot to us. Thank you, especially to those out there who are part of the Patreon program. If you want to help support us financially and keep this podcast moving, please click the link in the description below and prayerfully consider joining the Patreon program and helping us with this mission. Also, please go out to our U.S. Grace Force gear page. Fantastic place to get yourself the latest t-shirts and hoodies and sweatshirts, all kinds of cool stuff. We have a baby onesie. Yes, we have U.S. Grace Force baby onesies. It's a lot of fun and it helps support what we're trying to do here. So please go on out, take a look at the great designs and your purchase helps support what we're doing. Father, this is one of our one of our good friends. He's been with us many times. Uh, he and I just spoke at a conference recently in Minnesota. That's where they make very small sodas. Mini soda. <laughs> ar, ar, ar. <laughs> All right, I'll let you. I'll let you get the night started, Father. Sure. We are jazzed to have Jesse with us. Uh, Jesse is a former uh, Los Angeles uh, cop, uh, police officer. And uh, now a, a very, very important and, uh, and very um, excellent Catholic speaker. Uh, I think your, your biggest thing you're doing now is uh, Jesse and Terry, right, on your, on your podcast. And uh, that's getting a lot of um, uh, people looking at that. And uh, it, it's just an amazing uh, pro program. But Jesse, we're, we wanted to have you on because, uh, you know, we continue to be in these times you know this is the hand we've been dealt this is yeah. uh this is you know the times in which we're we're living and and uh you know i think a lot of people are fed up i don't know about you but i, I feel like that's the place we're at right now where uh, the tyrants have been uh <laughs> at us for a long time now what do we got uh, not going on two years or whatever it is but um it's it's been a long time and and we've about had it and you can see signs of that all around. Um, we saw what happened with Southwest. Uh, we're seeing it uh, uh, in other places. I think uh, even among law enforcement officers, uh, they're, they're starting to rise up too. And just say, you know, listen, this is America. This isn't Russia. Uh, this isn't uh, Venezuela. This is America. And, uh, and we're, we're not going to let us uh, slip into this. And I know too that, you know, we're a Catholic uh, radio show. And yet we seem to be talking about what people would frame it as politics. And no, uh, we're talking about tyranny. We're talking about evil. We're talking about the stripping of our religious rights. We're talking about going now on 48 years worldwide, 1.7 billion children destroyed, murdered under our watch. Uh, and like I said, I think, and I'm among them, and I know you guys are too, we're fed up, okay, and no more. And so I think this, what we're talking about to, on this show is, uh, okay, now, where do we go from here? We've been doing a lot of praying, and we need to do that first, and we have been, and we'll, we'll continue to do that. But where do we go from here? What, what, what does that begin to look like? And I know, Jesse, that um, 
I, I think you're a prophet. I always say prophets are ones who can, uh, re, you know, read the, the the lay of the land. They, you know, they, they discern what's going on in the culture very, very well. And you're one of those. So Jesse, uh, what's your take on you know, where we are and, and uh, what you think uh, we need to be doing at, at our next stage, if you will? Father, we have to think micro and macro, okay? okay. First of all, we have to realize that government's not the solution. That's the first thing that Catholics have to get in their head. Government and politics is not the solution. Right. I remember the, the, the most uh, terrifying nine words uh, from uh, Ronald Reagan. He said, quote, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Close quote. Okay. Those are the most, Ronald Reagan right. says, those are the nine most terrifying words ever yep. spoken uh, by the government. When they knock on your door and tell you, I'm from the government and I'm here to tell. Help. Yeah. Now, micro, first of all, we have to make sure that our house is in order. Uh, right. The Catholic, the Catholic home is called the domestic church. If, uh, if there's disorder in your house, right. moral disorder, sinful disorder, you've got to get your house like it's like Joshua 24 15 as for me and my house we will serve the Lord right the next thing we have to do is we can't change Washington so to speak or even the governor's mansion in, in our particular state but we can get involved in the local that's called the principle of subsidiarity mm -hmm. get involved in your county in that's the right. city get involved in the local politics of the school boards that affect you if every Catholic would get involved in the local stuff, that would have a sweeping effect on the macro because then we'd be able to put in good Catholic patriots, conservatives, people of faith, uh, fellow travelers, people that, uh, you know, uh, people of goodwill that are not Catholics. Uh, we can put them in, in, in positions of, of, of power in, in, in office. And this way, it's going to have a tsunami effect on the rest of the country. The next thing we as Catholics have to do is categorically. 70 million Catholics in this country, we have to do what got Father Altman in trouble. I wrote a whole book about this. I, who knows? Maybe I'm in trouble as well. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Catholics cannot vote for, uh, for pro-abortion Democrats or pro-abortion Republicans. But in the party platform, the, the Democrats are the pro-abortion party of death. That's even a title that Cardinal Burke called them. He said they're, they're, they're quickly becoming the party of death. A Catholic, imagine if, the, if what this would send. The, the, this shot would be fired around the world if the pro-abortion Democrat Party understood that 70 million Catholics are going to withhold their vote. They never win it. They never win an election again. Right. And that would make people come out and become more like Mancini or Mancini right. uh, and, and others like like him who are probably there's a few probably pro-life quiet Democrats that are there. They don't want to say anything because they don't want to get their heads cut off. But uh I think on a macro level, we also have to realize that we are living in very, very serious times. Bishop Sheen said in 1967, he said, he said, quote, the conflict of the future will be between a God religion and a state religion, between Christ and the Antichrist, but in political disguise. Notice what he says. That in the, he said this in 67. The future conflict is going to be between a God religion, I would call that the, the Catholic Church, instituted by Christ in its authentic perennial teachings, and a state religion. The state religion is Marxism. And we're seeing this whole uh, COVID-19 religious cult uh, that's using Marxism as, uh, as a bully pulpit to basically beat us into submission. Right, right. Now, Jesse, when you, you, I mean, you travel around a lot, I know, uh, kind of what's a, what's the take of what you're getting from people, their mood, their atmosphere, their attitude. I mean, for example, the conference you and I just spoke at in Minnesota, um, it was good 275, 300 people there. And, you know, the people I'm talking to, they're, they're, they're very concerned, they're very overwhelmed, but there is still hope. And I think kind of, I'm going to put that against what father said earlier today, you and I were talking father. And you said, notice that a lot of the people that we see who seem to have a hope are the ones that are connected to the divine life, that they, they've got a prayer life, they've got a sacramental life, and there's something in there that's keeping them hopeful, even as they're 
seeing these things com- continue to unravel. And, Jesse, and they're seeing what evil's up to more clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's much more exposed. Line. Yeah. Yeah. So, Jesse, what are you seeing from the people you're talking to as you travel around with regards to their, their attitude, their position on what's going on? Serious Catholics, nothing's changed. They're as serious as they were the day before this uh, pandemic, scandemic. Mm. Uh, they're, they're tracking towards heaven. They live in a state of grace. They have a, they have a strong Catholic interior life. You have another segment of Catholics that have red pill and they've realized like, wow, I've been fooled. I've been duped. I've been lukewarm. I've been kind of indifferent. I've been kind of a Sunday mass check the box Catholic. And there's a lot of people that are moving over towards more, what I would call more an Orthodox, a more Orthodox Catholic faith Mm -hmm. and a more sacramental lifestyle as a result that they've realized that we're, we just entered into some very dark times. We've been in dark times for decades, but it's, we're now on dark times on steroids. And a lot of these uh, Catholics that are on the fence, a lot of them have jumped over to our side and they said, you know what? It's, it's time to become a serious Catholic. Mm-hmm. Who knows how long we're going to be here? Uh, I, I've seen also lukewarm other another segment of lukewarm Catholics. They're, they're frigid. They're, they're as cold as can be. I mean, they're wearing two masks as they're, riding a car, you know, a shield and a mask, uh, you know, they, 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 they uh, shout at you to keep away from them if, if you get too close and stuff, if you're not wearing a mask. So uh, there's another f- segment of lukewarm Catholics that have become more liberal, progressive, and have bought into the whole Marxist, uh, Marxist plan. Mm. Yeah, it just seems like we've lost the gray area. Uh, some months ago, I wrote, wrote about that, the shrinking gray area, that it's just not there. I mean, you, you got to make a choice. And, and I think you're right, Jesse, that there's a lot of Catholics who have been kind of swimming in that lukewarm pool of, of Catholicism. They've been, they've been, um, but Pius V, I think he said, I don't know if I'm going to quote him exactly, but all the evil of the world is due to uh, weak, the weakness of Catholics mm-hmm. or the lukewarmness of Catholics. So Pius X said something similar too. But, um, and it says in Revelation 12, uh, you know, oh, how I wish you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm i spit you i vomit you out of my mouth but the anger the ire uh, of these popes and and of course uh you know revelations 12 uh toward that segment of the pol- uh, population you know i just I, i'm teaching this class for uh, junior high and high school and uh it's called superhero hero school and the idea is you know once you're supernaturalized god's going to call you to be heroic so you're you're literally a superhero and uh, I talked to him about this lukewarm. I said, I said, lukewarm are the Navy SEALs for the devil. And what, what do I mean by that? Because, you know, uh, um, let's talk about hot and cold. You know, uh, uh, on fire Catholic, you know, is obviously for God. But a cold is someone who is, hits rock bottom. And, and you know, they're, they could very possibly uh, have that conversion experience. Uh, and, and they're not influencing anybody because... Somebody even lukewarm or hot looks at them and says, well, no, I can't do that. You know, so, but the lukewarm, okay, the ones who profess to be devout, but then advocate or even pass bills uh, for uh, the murder of children, even up to the, to the time of birth. I mean, I, I always feel like I'm trying to emphasize how bad abortion is by saying, even at the time of birth, I, no, at the time of conception, it's a person. You know, it's, it's, it has the same rights and value and dignity of a 42 year old man, you know, but anyways, but it's, it's, um, we, we, so lukewarm is, is that Catholic that says, oh, I'm devout and look at me and, and I go to mass maybe once in a while, but, and then what they're doing is they're modeling that then for others and, and teaching them that they can be that kind of Catholic. So that what the Catholics, you know, you said Catholics can't vote for uh, pro-abortion Democrats. Uh, wholeheartedly agree, um, but they, they say ca- the Catholic vote is the swing vote, and yet here we are. And yet here we are. That that that, and politicians will only advocate for things that get them into office, that get them votes. <laughs> you know, so they're getting votes by advocating for killing children. And we're the swing vote mm-hmm. because the Navy SEALs of the Catholic Church are keeping us all lukewarm. That's why Pius V said all the evil of the world is due to the weakness of Catholics. We are called 
to change the world. And in this context of what we're talking about here, we can literally change the, 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 uh, the, the, um, the laws that protect little babies, little children, okay, uh, if we rise up and what? Become hot. And that's where I, I want to start getting into that too for the show. Um, that I think part of what we're talking about here as we're starting to rise up and have hope and courage, I think we got to talk about how do we get the lukewarm? You, you hit it right out of the park when you said, Jesse, some of the lukewarm are coming over and they're getting hot, but some of them are going the other direction. And it's, it's just a shame. And we have family and friends that are like that too. But how do we get them to come over to the hot Catholic way, uh, to the to the on fire Catholic way, to the truly devout Catholic way. And, and I'll, I'll just throw this out. I, I think it begins with how we come and worship at the source and summit of our, of our faith, the holy sacrifice of the mass. I mean, if, if, we're, if we're kind of casual and going through the motions and doesn't seem to be, I always say this, um, that you, when you watch a mass, it's done with beautiful order and, and uh, sacredness. I, my, my mind, for whatever reason, goes to the military honor guard because I think it's just like that where look what they're doing for that fallen comrade, the, 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 the precision that they use, mm. right? And, and you're just, everybody who has ever been that, like graveside services and that, they're just like, whoa. Because why? <laughs> because they're, they're, they're saying we're taking this very seriously and that's a hero. Well, you know what? That's God on that altar, Okay. And uh, so can we offer the same? So that's what I'm saying is we got to work on this. I'm, and, and I'm so grateful and I'm going to be praying so hard because uh, the bishops uh, meet in November. But one of the things that's been put on the table is this uh, Eucharistic, uh, I want to say rekindling, revival. I, I hope that goes the right way. I really do. But, but, but that's Jesse, I think, and Doug, I think that's what what uh, we need to be about in 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 getting this uh, this surge to keep going of of hope and courage going forward. Wouldn't you say, Jesse? Yeah, Father. What a lot of uh, Catholics lack is just information. Yeah. Because there, because there's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of disinformation. There's a lot of propaganda. A lot of gaslighting. A lot of psyops yeah. out there. And so a lot of Catholics just don't have the wherewithal or the sophistication to sift through all the weeds and I get know. to the truth. Because once you get to the truth, the truth will set you free. The truth is a person. Okay, It's not a, beyond a book. It's beyond a creed. It's a person. And if once we can facilitate and help Catholics encounter the Lord Jesus Christ, yes, that's the game changer. That's when everything changes. Your whole way of looking at politics changes, morality, the opposite sex, uh, uh, everything changes as soon as you encounter Christ. And, and so this is why the, the mission of the Catholic Church, the most important mission, is not talking about, you know, climate change or, you know, taking plastic out of the ocean or, or uh, you know, the, the indigenous Indians, how to, you know, and, and looking at their culture and, and just kind of like, now, no, the most important thing is the salvation of souls. The last code in the book, the Code of Canon Law, which is right behind me, it's like in paragraph 1752, I think. The very last canon says that the Catholic Church exists for the salvation of souls. The Catholic Church doesn't, doesn't exist to tell us to stand six feet apart or to, you know, put on a mask and all these other things. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's medicine and science. The church, they're not experts in, when it comes to that area. The church is here to get our souls to heaven. And as lay Catholics, uh, Fulton Sheen says, who's going to save the church? It's you lay Catholics. As right. lay Catholics, we have to be out there, uh, you know, uh, doing the work of the apostle. Because we're going to encounter more people than the average priest is going to encounter. Because we're out there in, in the public sphere. And it's our job to be mission, authentic missionary disciples for Jesus Christ. Once a person encounters Christ authentically, even the way they part their hair changes, most especially the way they vote. Yep. Now, when you mention hair... What did, I look. I looked at you and me. Yeah, I, hey, I'm yeah, catching I, up, Dad. I'm catching I, up, brother. Yeah, I got something going yeah. on here. <laughs> I, I want to be part of the group. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah and you know, the, which I, and guys, what we're seeing happen right now in 
we all know it. We all see it. Is is this this um, this meeting now of faith and how we've lived our faith and the tyranny that's being really thrust upon us, the oppression that's upon us now. I mean, here's this great image, Father. I, maybe you can talk about this image we put up right now. Uh, and it's the, this, you see here about the, the tyranny and the guy with the whip. Brother, why you posted this on your Facebook yeah. page? Break that down if you could for us, what, why you posted that. Yeah, what, so what this you, means for people. People aren't getting it on first glance. It just means, you know, it starts with the group standing and the guy's holding the whip. And then all of a sudden he starts whipping them. And all they, they all go down to their face and knees, and except for one person. And, that, you know, it usually is one person that, that, that gets everybody else going. And then you can see in the third image there, that, that a number more rises up with that one person against the, the, the tyrannist. <laughs> and then you can see that in the last image that they all rise up, and then the guy with the whip is down on his knees and, and bowed down. And then it says, we are here now. What, talking about that third image, and I, I'm seeing that. I, I, I think that people are rising up, and uh, we need to get unified, and we need to grow it more. But it, the rising is starting. That's a rise up in hope and courage, uh, and I think it is starting. Well, and I think also, I mean, we, we're seeing this as we talk about just lately with Southwest Airlines, the CEO of Delta Airlines, basically starting to say things, hey, look, we're not going to force this this. Uh, this, uh, we have to be careful, obviously, here with our, we have to be code. We have, we're speaking in code. You know, I like so what Archbishop uh, Brolio of the Archdiocese of the Military said, too. Yeah. We're, you we're, know, that, that exemptions are legitimate. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So the, all these little bits and pieces are, are you know, the victories on the battlefield. Uh, but I, I see this very much as, you know, when we, for the longest time, we would hear this idea, this attitude of separation of church and state. You can't talk religion, politics, can't combine these things together. Well, now we're at a point where the, the political is, is crushing the faith and the religion and the hope in, in, in a lot of people right now. And, you know, people have, have tried to silence this. I got to put in a position where I was told you can't be political anymore on your social media or else. And it was a, it was a Catholic. Uh, I, I can't go into detail on it so as not to incriminate certain people. But uh, it did put a situation where I had to look at them and say, I don't think so. You know, I, I can't. They're trying to shove socialism down our throats. They're trying to bring this Marxism more aggressively into the country. I mean, it's been going on for years in our schools, indoctrination process and so forth. This has been going on for decades. I, I personally don't get what they mean anymore by, because I've been called out too about being yeah. political. I yeah. don't get that. I, I, I don't understand it anymore. When you got tyrannous, you know, that they're doing what they're doing. And again, they're killing 1.7 billion babies. A grown man can follow a little girl into the bathroom. We just had a, we saw a case where uh, a man's daughter was raped uh, yeah. in a bathroom. Loudon County. Uh, yeah. you know, but if we talk about that, that's political. Yeah. I, 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 I absolutely 100% don't get it. Um, and I, I think it's just a way to uh, put the chilling effect on us and get us to shut up. And and I'm, I'm, st I'm tired of it. I, I'm, I'm going to talk about how wrong it is for a little nine-year-old to get raped in a bathroom. I'm going to talk about that. Yeah. And by, by the way, uh, the catechism says that the church is supposed to get involved in politics. It's in paragraph 2246. Nice. Yeah. It's, it says it is part of the church's miss mission to pass moral judgments, even in matters related to politics. Yeah. Mm. 2246. It says the same thing in 2244. Yeah. The church invites political authorities to measure their judgments and decisions against this inspired truth about God and man. Yep. Uh, again, it's, it's just uh, the, people forget that the Catholic Church is a supernatural institution and the government is a natural institution. Mm. And so the supernatural takes uh, primacy over the natural. Yeah, and, and you know what, Jesse, I know you talked about this in an in a episode, upcoming episode of Battle Ready, uh, the TV show we have on EWTN uh, that's coming out. And you talked about the three areas of authority, bringing in fatherhood, church authority, and government authority, and that the, everything's rooted in, in God, of course. And you can't and, and, separate and, and, these out. Yeah, yeah. 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 And it's – go ahead, Jesse, you going to say something? Here's, he, here's a good way to understand the relationship between – the Catholic faith, which is the one true religion, and politics. Okay, the Catholic faith is is like the engine. That's a it, it's objective truth. The engine is the objective truth of the Catholic faith. Now, 
the caboose, which is the last car, that's that's where politics is at. Okay, so politics is is moved or follows objective truth. Uh, you can't put the caboose politics before the engine. That's not the way it works. But yet you can't separate them. The engine goes first. The one true church and objective truth. And, and it pulls politics, which is just the caboose. It's not the other way around. Yeah, well, and, and I want to get back to something here because, you, you know, you, we're all talking about the importance of being involved and engaging in this and not separating out church and state. We've all got to be part of this. Um, what should we be doing? What can we be doing? Let's, I mean, obviously, even things like this. We, we have a platform through our, our podcast here uh, on YouTube and, and through our audio platforms as well with this. So, and Jesse, you've got, you know, Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Big shout out, Virgin Most Powerful Radio, Most everybody. Powerful. Go out there on the internet and watch that. Jesse's out there. Terry's out there. You got some good stuff out there. Bishop Strickland, you got a program with him once a week. Some great stuff. So Virgin Most Powerful Radio, big shout out for them. Um, but the average person doesn't have a platform like that, Jesse, or a podcast to do. But I remember a quote from a friend of mine. Actually, it wasn't his quote. Father uh, Mike Bahuniak, and he was very good friends with Mother Teresa. Very, very good friends with her. And he would say this. He would say that Mother would say, I'm a voice. I might be a small voice, but I'm still a voice. Mm -hmm. And he was saying this as if, or, or in the context of her saying, the voice needs to speak. And it doesn't matter who you are out there. Like for one, one simple example, I'm going to shamelessly push something that we just started and encourage people. Go out to BR Coalition YouTube channel. It's a new channel. We just started it. BR Coalition YouTube channel. We've got just a couple of videos out there right now at the time we record this. We're going to put one up a week. We just shot another one today earlier. It is a channel that is encouraging people to take the steps necessary to be better prepared body, mind, and soul. And get, get strong. strong. Yes. Be our coalition. Get strong. You need to get strong. That's it. So we're going to ask you to go out, check out Battle Ready Coalition YouTube channel. Subscribe to that channel, please. Every time you subscribe, you help spread the message because algorithms all that is, is affected by it, and it reaches more people. And yes, we need to get strong. We need to take the steps necessary to do that. But the small voices that, that we might feel we are in this world, and I feel like, I mean, we're all small voices in one way or another, but Jess, talk about the importance of being a voice in the littlest ways even. You know, we know the great things about Mother Teresa saying, do little things with great love. But how about we how about we take that and adapt that to the, to the idea of what, when Jesus says, what you hear whispered in your heart, shout from the rooftops. What little ways can we be shouting from the rooftops, coming together in union, whether we're Catholics, evangelicals, Protestants, you know, or, or just freedom loving, God fearing, God given freedom appreciating people who have to come together, like that image, Father, that you posted of the crowd rising up. Otherwise, we may be marched away to places we don't want to go and really don't have to go if we rise up now, 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 now. I don't have enough nows in my vocabulary. Now. Jesse, how does the small voice, what advice, what encouragement do you give to the small voice, whoever any of us are in these times? I'll give you an example of a small voice, and uh, it, it made a difference in a lot of people's lives. Rest in peace. Uh, Flight 93, United Flight 93, that was hijacked by Muslims, uh, September 11, 2001. They uh, intended to, uh, well, they had already crashed into the World Trade Center, or they wanted to crash it into the World Trade Center of the Pentagon. That's, uh, that was the goal. It, it would have been the fourth, well, this was the fourth plane, actually, and they wanted to use this plane to crash into the White House. Well, guess what? There was a guy that said, not on my watch, named Todd Beamer. He's on the phone talking with an operator. Uh, he hears a Muslim terrorist on board stab one of the passengers. Uh, he sees that both pilots uh, were basically had their throat slit. Uh, he does an Our Father with the operator. They, the Protestants call it the Lord's Prayer. Uh, the, him and the operator, they, they, he said, tell my, tell my wife and two children that I love them. Then he, he said, uh, God, people heard him say, God help me, or the operator. He said, God help me. Jesus help me. Are you ready? Let's roll. Yeah, we, we need a bunch of Todd Beamers. We need a bunch of people in cities and towns and counties saying, God help me. Mm -hmm. Jesus help me. Are you ready? Let's roll. Amen. And you see this 
on YouTube, there are so many men and women that are going to board of supervisors meetings, city hall meetings. Uh, they're going to school board meetings and they are standing up and speaking truth to power, just yeah. like John the Baptist did. I mean, yeah. some of them are getting arrested. Yeah, the even though, is, And even though, Jess, some of them are now being deemed as, as a form of domestic terrorists. Yeah. Yeah, by the uh, FBI and DOJ, yeah. But again, uh, Dan, I, I mean, uh, um, Doug, the, the fact is, we have to remember that we're living in Satan's world, 1 mm -hmm. John 5, 19. And so uh, the mask is off right now. I mean, things have been pretty peaceful most of my life, but the mask is totally off right now. We know who controls this world. It's Satan. And he's got, he's got, again, he's got his minions out there. The catechism tells us that this is go what's going to happen. It's paragraph 675. Just like Jesus Christ was persecuted, so will his body, the church, be persecuted. Guess what? I think right now, I think we're in the first mystery of the verse of mystery as a church. I think we're in the agony of the garden, Garden of Gethsemane. Mm. That's where we're at, right? The agony, yeah, the agony of the garden. That's where we're at right now. And this has, St. Augustine says, what happens to the head is going to happen to the body. But as Catholics, we have to take courage and we have to realize that no matter what they throw at us, we've got to stand our ground. And no matter what they throw at us, We've got Jesus on our side. We've got Our Lady on our side. And we've got legions of angels around us. And whatever God allows to happen through his providence, guess what? God is going to give us the grace uh, to see it through and to fight against it and to be able to endure until the end. That's Catholicism, Matthew 10, 22. Those who persevere to the end will be saved. And right now we have entered, I believe, into that that time where paragraph 675 talks about that the church will start going an incredible acute persecution i think right now we're in the first sorrowful mystery the agony in the garden yeah i you know i i keep analyzing how do we ever get here mm. and and you know one of the i think the more hopeful um looks at what how we got to this place is i think you had a lot of uh beautiful catholics and patriotic americans who really felt that, hey, things are going great. So I can, and I always say it this way, so I can go shopping and golfing. You know, I don't have to worry about it too much. High level of trust. I think that good people uh, tend to give uh, others a pass and assume good attentions. You know, I think, I think that's, but, you know, if we're not careful that to our dismay, because uh, it, people might take advantage of that, we're learning, Right. And so I think what's happening right now, you guys, is, is that it's a big wake-up call for all of us that the aggressive ones are the ones that are winning, the, the ones that are asserting themselves and, uh, and you know, taking control of, you know, the county board meetings and all this stuff, uh, uh, teachers' unions and all, all this stuff. It, it, they're, they're the ones that are winning the day right now and, and, and also the most um, aggressive, you know, the far left, right? The socialists slash communists are shouting the loudest. And frankly, while a lot of other people are going shopping and golfing. And so the shouters are, are winning the day. And we, we, we just have to learn from all this that, uh, you know, it's uncomfortable to get out of your safe space, to get out of your comfort zone. It's not fun, but, but we're, we need heroes to rise up. We need courageous people with great hope, with great trust in the supernatural power of God. But we need to do, I always say, you know, we need to pray the rosary and I mean it and we knew, but I always worry that, that, that people go, Oh good. That's all I need to do. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I, I, I can check the box and then I'm done. No, no. Uh, the grace of God that pours into our hearts is meant to call us to missions every day, different missions, ways in which God is calling you to bring that light, to push out the darkness, to, to make this world a better place. And so we can, so the rosary is powerful. However, if we're not careful, we can hide behind it. And we can't do that. We can't, we can't just check the rosary box and feel we're done. We need to let the rosary and the power of grace that comes through the Blessed Mother to us uh, to empower us to go out 
and and actively also be assertive in in wanting to take back um you know the, this this country this world from the the the, the aggressors who are winning right now mm-hmm. that's yeah. the father you're right because that's called the heresy of uh, quietism yeah that's uh, basically somebody that just uh just rejects the idea of this world for heaven and that could lead to quietism if you just go hide in a little corner just uh you know just just pray and do nothing else and don't get involved right and do your and do your civic responsibilities because the fourth commandment obligates us to do our civic responsibilities and it's not like again if you ever hear somebody tell you that you know christians should stay neutral on political issues or that god doesn't care about political issues uh that's just not true you, you've been targeted by deception that those are those are subtle uh, uh delusional statements that are designed to make you shut down your influence uh on american life the goal of of the enemy is to make us mute and not to get involved by eliminating our, by eliminating our voice from the national discourse yep. they, they want to censor our biblical worldview what does it say in our coins in god we trust or one nation under god not one nation under marxism or secularism or communism and so as, as catholics what fulton sheen said when the state sets itself as absolute uh, when the state claims sovereignty over the soul when the state uh, destroys freedom of conscience and freedom of religion then the state has ceased to be political and has become and has begun to be a counter church right mm. when you say a counter church um could that apply also to and i don't want to and be careful with speaking code here for our audience out there. The current issue going on right now seems to become a bit of a church, a religion, a cult almost, uh, where we've got the current um, new mayor of uh, New York talking about having um, apostles to go out and yeah. push. Be my for, apostles. For, for Yes, for the injection, to get the injection. Um, I mean, I, I see this very much as if it has become almost like this, like a pagan religion type of approach that's going on right now. And I mean, I mean, don't you think that the guys what that are doing, lot- they're getting a shot of dopamine going through their system is what it is. They're addicted to to the high that they get for being these tier tier. Yeah, tier- yeah. And you can see that almost an enthusiasm, almost a slight giddiness yeah, going on when they're on camera pushing certain things. Yeah. You know, like there's something out there. Um, and then, of course, there are a lot of people out there that are getting that same dopamine hit by by threatening others for not doing what would be considered, as they say, the most responsible thing to do uh, is get this medical procedure or make sure that you get a, a, a diaper on your face and, and all that sort of stuff out there. Um, and I know that we got this, we, the title, Rise Up in Hope and Courage. I think of Joshua 1. Behold, I command thee, take courage and be strong and do not be dismayed. You know, we're supposed to be good stewards of what we've been given. We know this. Be a good steward of what you've been given. You know, be a good steward of the talents and the gifts that God gives you. Well, be a good steward of the freedom that God gives you too. Be a good steward of of the fact that God has entrusted others to your care, a community, a society, a family to your care. Be a good steward of them by standing up in the right ways to defend and protect okay, their rights and their freedom now and long-term. I'm thinking about how do I explain to my grandkids, um, you know, five, 10 years from now, am I going to have to explain to them? Well, there was a time when we didn't have to cover our faces when we were out in public. There was a time when we didn't have to rely on a medical procedure, you know, uh, booster once in a while. I mean, right now we're getting to this point where the new normal they keep telling us we have to get used to is just, you know, shut up and accept it and we're just going to go along with this. Take courage and be strong. Behold, I command thee. Take courage and be strong and do not be dismayed. But we have to step up. Um, we get worn out, though. We get war weary. Jesse, I mean, what advice, what encouragement do you have for people who are feeling that war weariness? I know they did during World War II, and they had to, you know, they, they had to go out and do certain things to ignite the people again, to buy more war bonds, to invest, to help keep the... The, the military equipment, you know, moving because the war wasn't quite over. We are war weary when it comes to standing up against these things. They've, they've really been effective. The, 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 uh, the Marxists out there, uh, socialists have been very effective in beating down hope in a lot of people. But that war weariness is, well, you're just tired. 
I mean, I know the three of us could all have those moments where you just sit on the edge of your bed, literally or figuratively with your face buried in your hands. And you're just thinking, I'm tired. I'm just exhausted. This, and, and it doesn't look like it shows uh, like this is going to be turning the right way very soon because we're constantly seeing more shoes drop and they don't look necessarily always positive, except for like the Southwest Airlines, the Delta CEO, you know, uh, these little things like this, which are so incredibly important. But what advice do we have? What encouragement really to not let the war weariness kind of dominate and, and take your steam out of your, out of your effort? Well, here's what, here's what I, what I do personally. You just got to learn to disconnect sometimes. For example, when I get off the podcast, I, I'm going to go work out for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah, going to get, too, get a good sweat. I'm going to lift. I'm going to, you know, work out for an hour. Yep. Uh, I'm going to hit the shower tonight, Mondays. I do a holy hour on Monday night. So me and my mm -hmm. wife are going to go and spend an hour with my Bible, my rosary in front of the blessed sacrament. for nice. month. Uh, Another thing, try to eat right. Especially when, when in times of stress, yeah. if you're not eating right, that also affects the way you think it affects your body. And we're living in stressful times right now. So right now is a time when you want to try to eat right. Uh, and also, a verse that I always have in mind is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2. Keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Around my uh, neck, I have a St. Benedict's crucifix. I don't have a pope hanging around my neck. I don't have a bishop. I don't have a priest. I don't have a deacon. I don't have a nun. Uh, I have Jesus Christ hanging around my neck. He's why I'm Catholic. He's the be-all and the end-all. He's why uh, I do what I do every single day. It's because of my love for him. And so we got to keep it simple because when you start looking at men uh, in the book of Psalms, it says, don't put your trust in princesses. You know, anybody, anybody can let you down. Romans 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us are sinners and stuff. So don't, don't, uh, you know, idolize men. I don't care who they are. Pol politicians, men of faith, men of, you know, men in sports. Mm -hmm. These are, they all, they're all going to let you down. Keep your eyes on Jesus Learn to disconnect again, like like for the for the two hour. I'm going to spend one hour working out, one hour doing a holy hour. So for two hours, I'll be completely disconnected from everything that's going on there. Now, uh, and 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 so that that's just that's just a good piece yeah. of common sense advice. Learn to disconnect. Don't that, if you're plugged in all day with your phone, Instagram, tweet, tweeting, texting, yeah. uh, yeah. Facebook, you're going to go sick. You're going to yeah. go sick. Studies have even been done. Uh, there's you can type this up. Psychiatrists have said that people that just saturate themselves with social media, these guys suffer, they suffer from acute depression and anxiety. That's why after the elections, after they stole the election from Donald Trump, <laughs> I just I, I got off of uh, Facebook and I got off of uh, uh, I think it was Instagram or a, a, a Twitter. I got off of Twitter and Facebook just per, as a personal protest. And guess what? My life is so much better. <laughs> oh. I got so much, I got so much peace of mind when I disconnected from those social medias, uh, you know, uh, platforms. So those are some things that I would just recommend uh, on a micro level. Yeah, you said it a little bit like uh, like a battle ready coalition commercial there, which I appreciate very much. You know, <laughs> the body, mind, soul. Uh, yeah, you got to take care of all of it because we're it, it's all it's all lumped together. It's all connected. God, it's all connected. Yeah, God, a lot of connective tissues there between the body, mind, soul. There, combination. Um, you know, and I know you know, Father. One of the things I like about I really appreciate about Father, you know, to help encourage people and bring hope is his Facebook page. He'll put out you know, kind of a you know, a, you know, kind of scary, dangerous stories out there about oh, look what's happening, and then he'll put out something on yeah, I'm working on my chili recipe right now. <laughs> You know, and so you've got that sense of humor you got to throw in there. And that's one thing I'll add to what you just said, Jess, is we have to keep a sense of humor when it comes to this stuff. And it was it was uh, Thomas More in 1535 had his head cut off at the command of Henry VIII because he would not capitulate to the attacks against truth, especially in the area of marriage and the authority of the church. And he wrote a prayer. And the prayer, he speaks in there about give me a sense of humor. That's in the prayer. Lord, mm -hmm. give me a sense of humor that I can bring joy to others in this world. You know, while he's in the thick of seeing what's going on, he recognizes that there is something about uh, keeping a certain detachment from letting this stuff overwhelm you and have, keeping a sense of humor in the midst of this. I always yeah. appreciate, you know, Father, you're, you're, again, your Facebook post, you always throw that kind of stuff out there, which is fun. Like your Saganite Gracies are always hilarious, you know, come up with good images there. But, uh, 
Yeah, Father, what do you, what's your advice to people? Your encouragement about yeah, about this is great advice. You, yep, you guys are given because we gotta we gotta get strong, you know. Yeah, spiritually, physically, and all that stuff. The only thing I'd add is that, and I think this is important. We gotta get united. Yeah, uh, and we gotta get well connected to yes to God, but yes to each other. I tell you a quick story about what happened today. Um, you mentioned chili, Doug. Uh, I haven't made it in a long time. And I haven't been going to the grocery store because they're strict about masks. So I go to the gas station for my groceries. But anyways, uh, I said, nuts, I, I really want the chili now. So I'm going to the grocery store. Well, I get to the checkout line and all the employees at the checkout line go, Father Rick, where have you been? We missed you. <laughs> I kind of developed a great relationship with them there. And we had hugs and everything. And, and I said, and then I pulled down my mask and I said, well, you wouldn't miss me if you came to the 915 Mass every Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> they literally pulled out a piece of paper and pad and started writing down. Yeah. That's 915 <laughs> and Pine Bluff because they're going to start coming. But, it, it, but it's funny. I, and then I said, uh, yeah, that's our fancy schmancy Mass. That's the one I'm inviting <laughs> you to. That's our official name for it, the fancy schmancy Mass. But the, I, I, I thought of that in the context of, of uniting with everybody is, you know, we have to let our guard down. We have to let uh, our barriers down and we have to let people in. And uh, whether it's our closest circle or people we meet in the, uh, meet in the grocery store, whatever it is, but we got to get united. And uh, I've been saying since, uh, since this virus uh, started and, uh, and this tyranny began uh, along with it, that uh, I think that the manifestation of, of demons is primarily been rage and division that's been going on in all this time. And that really, if you think about it, that that's the essence of who Satan is. Uh, fiery rage and keep us divided. Well, the opposite of that is love and joy and a sense of humor and, 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 and finding ways to make that connection, right? And, and to become, instead of divided, to become unified. I, 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 you guys mentioned social media. I do use it. I feel like Maximilian Colby uh, we need to we need to counter the truth or counter the falsehoods with truth, and uh, I've found it very effective so far um, to do that. But also too, I know a lot of the my uh, parishioners' kids' names because I see that they went to the zoo today, you know, and you know, little Maggie went to the zoo and uh, whatever. But it's it's just a way for us to um, in in our fast paced world to make that connection that way as well. So. There, it's not all bad, and I think it is good. But uh, but I think we have to, uh, first of all, we have to share the truth with each other, okay? Because we're getting the propaganda coming at us is fierce. And that's the same thing again with Maximilian Colby in his time. He had to counter all those falsehoods with truth. So we got to get our hands on the truth. And like I said, too, devout people are especially tuned into the truth, and they're tuned into what the devil's doing, too. And, and, but we've got to devour the truth. We just got to get as much as that we can and share that with each other. And then we got to be, uh, be unified as, as much as we can. I, I, my parish is my family. I tell people, you know, if you're going to come to this, my, my parish, get ready. You're going to meet some of the most loving and joyful people you've ever met in your life. And they are. Uh, but, but we, we believe that's a priority for all of us. Again, to let the barriers down, um, I actually think I'm a an, I'm an introvert, and one of the ways they identify an introvert is that when you're with people, uh, you get tired at the end of it, and you know I, that's me. I, I do, but uh, I love people, and so I break through any um, you know barriers I might have with uh, being an introvert, obviously, <laughs> and uh, and 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 work at at getting close. And I think we need to do that, particularly now with this uh, manifestation of rage and division going on in our times. Right. Right. Yeah, and Jesse, I know you're big on to the, um, you know, you've been involved in a lot of spiritual combat, spiritual warfare with regards to helping priests with exorcists and with exorcisms and so forth. Um, your thoughts on the rage and division diabolical element of what's happening in our world right now? Of course. I mean, one of the signs of the diabolical is division. Uh, Fulton Sheen says that's one of the three signs of the diabolical. Mm -hmm. And the devil will try to divide society as he's doing, divide people, class warfare, this using the communist strategy, uh, divide your family, divide you from your faith, even divide your own thoughts. I mean, you've got good pious thoughts. You've got perverted thoughts. I mean, the devil's just all about division, dividing the Catholic church, dividing the country, uh, dividing schools. It's, it's just endless. I mean, that's, 
uh, he's been doing this since the Garden of Eden. It's called dividing conquer, and he does it very effectively. And, and the tools that he uses to divide are, it's in the Catechism, paragraph 407. He uses politics, he uses education, he uses social action, and he uses morality. Those are the four things that he uses to get people to, to, to divide. Morality, huh? you know, you got, you got Catholicism split in this country on uh, pro-abortion, you know, Catholics and pro-life Catholics. And there should be no pro-abortion Catholics. Right. Again, where's that come from? That comes from Satan, the whole division. Right. Uh, and, and so uh, as Catholics, one of the things that we have to remember is that, especially as men, we have an incredible responsibility. And, and, and by the way, you know, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. If you're living a sacramental life and, and, and a life of faith, God will, some people say, there's no way I can do this, that, and the other, and resist, and fight back, and stuff. No, God will give you the grace when you least expect it. If you're living a, if you're living a virtuous life, and you're living in a state of grace, you'll be like one of those men in the Titanic, uh, where as a result of, of uh, that calamity that happened, 75% uh, of the women survived that April 15th calamity. Uh, wow. 80% of the men perished. Why? Because 80% of the men, they were hit by the, the grace of God and made them realize, I'm supposed to protect the weak. I'm a man. I'm supposed to put my lay my life down. So 80% of the men perished in the Titanic and 75% of the women survived wow. as a result of men doing the right thing. So even if you think right now, there's no way... I can, you know, resist and go go against the establishment and and fight against my employer. Uh, no, this is a Titanic moment. Mm -hmm. And if you're a person of faith and a person of prayer, God will give you the grace to do the right thing. Yeah, I was thinking that you made me think of the, the what I call the King David DNA. You know that 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 King David that says no. You know, for the glory of God, he stands up against Goliath. He says it's not going to happen on my watch. It's just there. And if it's in him, it's not because yeah. he's so unique. It's in the DNA of a man to basically stand up in the face of evil and say, no, not on my watch. Right. And we need, we need all voices. You know, we talk about, I'm a voice, as Mother Teresa says, um, but we need more Davids. We really do. I know, ladies, I know we need Joan of Arcs too. There's no question about that because, you know, we think of, uh, you know, the ladies out there who, you know, the Old Testament, uh, was it Judith, I believe, who cut the head off the king? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Judith. Yeah, then you got. To, I'm going to pronounce it wrong. Jael, J E A L. Yeah. yeah. Drove yes. a tent spike through a guy's head, and nailed his head to the ground, and I. And Jesse, if I'm not mistaken, these were both um, like uh, foreshadowing or precursors to the Blessed Mother. Absolutely. By, by crushing the head of the serpent. So, yes. ladies, ladies, you have it in you too. I think, uh, Father, before the show, you were talking about the mama bear that comes out of women when they want to protect those that God entrusts to them. It's in us. It's in our DNA, male and female, to stand up against the, against evil in the face of evil, in whatever form. And it's there, and it just needs to be nurtured by the grace of God, and that we have to choose to cooperate with the grace in order for it to really take hold. Now, I'm always asking, what's enough to, to ignite... Uh, the fire to, to, to ignite yeah. uh, assertiveness in all of us to get us up and onto the battlefield. What's mm -hmm. enough? What, what's, what's the last straw Remember uh, for mother Teresa in 1993 at the, uh, at the youth conference in, uh, in Colorado. Oh, mother. Was, yeah. Mother Angelica. Yeah. You mean? Yeah. Oh yeah. Did I say, yeah. 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 World mother youth Angelica. day. 93. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were on mother Teresa, but mother Angelica, uh, they portrayed in, in, in this, um, uh, play acting of the uh, uh, the um the stage of the cross right uh, jesus was portrayed by a woman Th mm -hmm. that was a that was a breaking point for her and mm -hmm. and, and ewtn completely changed overnight uh she says no more you progressive bishops uh i've had it with you and uh, she went on that that what a 30 minute rant that she had look it up on youtube it's classic but but what's going to be for us and and what look what she ushered in too you know that was a, that was a heyday in the church I remember Catholic colleges started to really flourish, and uh, and we we saw the John Paul II priests, you know, young men that were came, became very very devout, and uh, entered the priesthood during that time. 
uh, and, and uh, we became more assertive on devotions, on a reverent mass and all this stuff. And uh, uh, so what is it that, that will move us? Because I, I just feel like we've been um, atta attacked and assault, assaulted. And I, I say since 2013, that was uh, one of the things that happened during that was the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, second uh, uh, term of Obama. So I call it the nothing to lose term. Well, what happened, you know, a year and a half after that started is uh, the Supreme Court redefined marriage for the first time and so on and so forth. It's just been a barrage since I believe 2013 until now. At, at what point are the mother angelicas of the world going to rise up and say enough, right? I think it's happening right now, Father, around the country. Good. Yeah, yeah. and and I mean, I, I, I'm watching... Uh, by the way, I'm on social media. I'm on Gab and Parter. <laughs> nice. So I'm not I'm, I'm not completely disconnected. Gab is run by a good young Christian man, and Parter is run by Candace Owens and her husband. So, nice. I, uh, but uh, it, for example, I mean, like the, the former and my former employer, the Los Angeles Sheriff's Department, where I retired from. Uh, this surprised me. I mean, this is Los Angeles, California. The LA Sheriff's is the largest Sheriff's Department in the world, and Sheriff Alex Villanueva, who I know. Uh, I worked with him as both of us as rookies. Uh, he just made a statement the other day. He says, none of my deputies, my, he, I think he's got 9,000 deputies or 10,000. He goes, none of my deputies are going to enforce any of these, uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 laws, none. Uh, we're, uh, he, so he said, uh, you know, if the federal government wants to come in and enforce them, they can come in. He says, we're not going to enforce any of these, well, my, my 9,000 officers. It, you, same thing with the San Bernardino County Sheriff. In, in, in uh, Southern California. He said the same thing. We're not enforcing these laws. Over here in uh, Pinell County, the county next to Maricopa County, next to mine in, in, in uh, Arizona, that, that sheriff, he also said the same thing. He goes, we're not enforcing these unjust laws. So you have one chief of police and one sheriff after another that are standing up to this tyranny. Yep. And they're saying, you're yeah. not going to use us as your guinea pigs. You know, you're not going to turn us into the Gestapo. Uh, you know, what we're seeing in Australia and in Canada, that's, to me, that, that's those cops should be prosecuted uh they have lost all common sense and they've they've lost all sight of what it means to protect and to serve mm, yeah good point yeah and uh, i mean for those who haven't watched australia it it has a lot of it has become pretty much a police state you know they're not allowing people to go any further than five kilometers from their home i mean i can't get to the grocery store if I can't go that far from my home. I mean, a lot of people are really, really under the gun. Um, and it, it just, it, the pressure is enormous. And, and this kind of pressure obviously is, is, is weighing on people, obviously psychologically, emotionally, suicide rate is up, depression rate is up, domestic violence, all these cases, you know, the, the, all these reports have come out. So we know all this is there. And, and I know we're getting near the end of the show, Father. I mean, I, I just think you had said earlier about really wanting to get into more of what we do to really rise up in hope and courage. Um, I'm curious, you know, you know, Jess, if you can speak to, you, you've already addressed a number of different areas there. Where do you see the trajectory of this going if we don't rise up in hope and courage? Not to sound doom and gloom here, but we know, we saw what has happened, you know, in, in previous Oh, let's say, you know, genocides, you know, or World War II when people capitulated in certain ways. A lot of people tried to stand up against Hitler. Many were, were chased down. You know, you had like a Dietrich von Hildebrandt, you know, amazing, amazing theological mind and spiritual person out there. John Paul II attributes a lot of his spirituality to him. Um, he was on, he was high on Hitler's kill list. You know, there were a few times when he got out of Dodge 24 hours or less before the Gestapo showed up. We can see just not too long ago by looking at history that we are doomed to repeat it. Hey, that sounds like a documentary we're working on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it sounds like if we don't follow, I mean, if we follow, excuse me, if we par follow that past of not standing up and speaking out, the trajectory doesn't look good. But this time it's global. This is not like a nation. There's a global push here. The Great Reset, there's a global push to really twist an entire world, an entire seven point what, five or seven billion people into a really, really twisted form. Jess, what do you think the trajectory is if we don't rise up in hope and courage and unite in these little voices everywhere? Here's four things that I'm doing here in Phoenix, Arizona, Maricopa County with hundreds of Catholic men. Number one, we know that 
the number one reason, the number one evil in the world, and if we as Catholics don't stop it, this is going to continue because this is just the judgment of God. Uh, and and ju the judgment of God starts first in the house of God, the church, and then society. What am I talking about? Every Catholic's got to be doing something in some way, shape, or form to try to stop abortion mm -hmm. by your vote, by a daily rosary, by uh, sending money to Priest for Life, Father Pavo, and Human Life International, by going to abortion clinics. That's number one. Once we stop the killing, the systemic killing of God's favorites, the young the children, uh, we're gonna see we're gonna see peace come back to the land. We're gonna see, as it says in Second Chronicles seven fourteen, you know, if my people pray and seek my face, I will heal their land. Our land's not gonna get healed until we stop the killing of innocent babies. Number one. So every Catholic has to be involved in some aspect of pro life work. Number two, I'm going to be very practical. Every Catholic man should own a gun. And every Catholic man should make sure that they have some kind of alar an alarm system in their house. Every Catholic man, it's, it's a responsibility at this point to have a gun in your house. Every Catholic man for your personal protection. Number three, again, turn your house into a domestic church. Be holy. Live in a state of grace. Be prayerful. And number four. Get involved in local politics. I have a little app in my phone that all the Phoenix, uh, Arizona politics, any bill, board of supervisors, anything that's happening politically, it comes right to my phone and it'll say board of supervisors uh, want to pass this bill. And then it'll tell you how to respond to all of them through a quick text, a quick email and what the bill is all about or LD12. Or they're talking about this passing this bill or, or, or moving with trying to pass this law. You ha we have to know what's happening locally. And what I do is a lot of these good young guys around here in Phoenix that are young and smart and well formed and, and intelligent, and well spoken. I just tap them in the shoulder. I said, Dude, I'm an old man. You're a young dude. Why don't you think about running for local politics? I never thought about that, Mr. Romero. Why don't you think about running for the school board? Why don't you think about running for LD5, LD12? Why don't you think about running for the board of supervisors? I put it in the mind of a lot of these young guys, these young tigers by the tail. I've had probably about six guys in the last since I've been here that are now running for local offices and, uh, and, and, and others that are on the pipeline. So those are the four things. Number one, as a Catholic, if we want to... If we want peace back in America, we've got to stop the killing of babies. Every Catholic has to be involved in some type of pro-life work. At least a rosary every day and offer a decade for the cessation of, of you know, for the overturning of Roe versus Wade. Number two, you got to have a weapon in your house. You got to have, you, you have a moral obligation to defend yourself and your family. That's in the catechism uh, in, 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 under the fourth commandment. Number three, be holy or die trying. Be sacramental, be prayerful, be a man of prayer, be a man of God. And number four, know what's involved in your local city. Don't be a doofus and stuff. Know who, know who the secretary of state is. Know who the mayor is. Know who the board of supervisors, what's cooking right now, and have some way, shape, or form where you're connected, where you can fire off you know, a text to them, an email to them. You got their number, a speed dial. You can call them up and say, hey, tell the governor this. As Catholics, we got to make noise just like the left. Hey, uh, that's a great way for us to end. That's real good practical advice. I'd only add this. Ronald Reagan said, we maintain the peace through our strength. Mm. Weakness only invites aggression. And right. I think that's what you're getting at there, Jesse, yeah, is that we exactly. got to be strong in all those areas you talked about. I'll add one more. Uh, just recently, um, Cardinal Burke is uh, on the mend, and he said, uh, I, I just want to put this out. We just uh, uh, celebrated the... Feast of uh, Our Lady of the Rosary, originally Our Lady of Victory in the Battle of Lepanto. And he said it was the rosary that brought the victory of peace. The mm -hmm. victory of peace. We want peace. The very first thing we should do after the sacraments is pick up that rosary and also carry that rosary you know, at all times. But pick up that rosary uh, and pray it. If you got a family, pray it together. But that's what brings peace to your to your soul to your family to your community right. and to our nation 
And so please, please, please. Yeah, and I, would say, and I would say right now, if, if anybody out there watching or listening right now has not prayed your rosary today, here's a great challenge and a great idea. As soon as we're done with this podcast in the next few minutes, pray your rosary, right? Pray your rosary awesome. offered up for Jesse, Father, myself, and the work we're trying to do. But the, by the God's grace, it'll be effective and, effic- you know, and, and, and reach a lot of people efficiently, and a lot of fruit hopefully will bear it from it. And also, don't forget to go out to the new BR Coalition YouTube channel, subscribe to it, share the videos, check out Virgin Most Powerful Radio. If you're not a member of Grace Force, join the U.S. Grace Force. Go to usgraceforce.com and join and be part of this warrior mindset. We've all got to work together. And the three of us here, we've got platforms. We work together a lot. Help us out. We want to help you spread this to other people. Let's be that little voice, united, a big choir, crying out the truth in these times. I always like to end the podcast, too, by calling down the Holy Spirit on everybody that's watching. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Awesome, Jesse. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, this is great.